Welcome to the return of the predictions and wishlist series. We have covered the open exhibit animals with our biomes videos, but now we move on to Planet Zoo's more possible smaller critters as a result of the confirmation of the terrarium mechanic. Based on current information, we can assume the terrarium will at least showcase reptiles based on the confirmations of the lesser Antillian iguana and the boa constrictor. This episode, we will focus on snakes. With a change of structure, we will also adjust our format. These species considerations will be judged on similar factors as we did in our previous biome speculations, but we will no longer be considering conservation status as a major precedent, mainly due to the fact there is a huge deficiency of data and lack of meaningful and interesting endangered snakes. Instead, a new condition for especially venomous or deadly snakes will improve their attractiveness and ultimate chance of appearing in the game. We will judge these snakes on their probability as expected, likely, and possible, with a final overview of honorable mentions that can be assumed to be unlikely. With the confirmation of the boa constrictor, it seems reasonable to begin our list with the boas, or the boaidae family, a group of non-venomous medium to large sized snakes most common in South America. Prey is killed by constriction and swallowed whole, similar to pythons, but slight anatomical differences in their teeth and the fact they give birth to live young distinguishes the two families. Arguably one of the most famous boas is the emerald tree boa, a strikingly apparent snake with bright green colouring. It is arboreal and spends most of its entire lives hunting small mammals, birds, lizards and frogs hanging from branches in the South American rainforest. It is primarily situated on the north bank of the Amazon Basin, stretching towards the Orinoco River. Its striking appearance and low maintenance as a snake makes it a popular captive specimen, showcased reasonable amount in zoos and reptile parks, and thus it is an expected inclusion for the game. Widely distributed from Panama to Argentina, the rainbow boa is one of South America's most common boa species, so-called and notable for its iridescent and holographic sheen, which makes it an attractive snake specimen for exhibition. Despite very specific humidity and heat requirements, rainbow boas were common on the pet trade, but recent crackdowns have resulted in more specialized showcasing in zoos and wildlife parks, a possibility. The heaviest snake in the world, and on average the second longest, the green anaconda is so large it tends to prefer mobility in the water. As such, it is considered an aquatic species of boa inhabiting most freshwater regions of South America. Hence, it is also known as the water boa. Anything that can be overpowered is preyed upon by the green anaconda, from capybara to caimans, tapirs, even jaguars. Green anacondas are notoriously difficult to house in captivity as they require specific lighting, temperature control, humidity, and access to water. Moreover, their size constraints require a very large terrarium, and they also display aggressive tendencies. Nevertheless, these factors make it one of the most sought after snake species for zoos due to their reputation amongst the public as being a difficult animal, enough to be considered an expected species for the game. Understandably, however, their appearance in zoos are very minimal. Another notable anaconda species is the yellow anaconda, smaller than its close relative the green, but still one of the largest extant snakes worldwide. Similarly, preferring aquatic habitats, the yellow anaconda is distributed over the entire Rio de la Plata basin of South America, constituting the Paraguay River and its tributaries in the Pantanal wetlands region. As its name suggests, it is colored yellowish with black spots and blotches. Equally as difficult to keep in captivity as the green anaconda, the yellow would no doubt be overshadowed by its larger counterpart and only offer a possible anaconda alternative. Other notable inclusions for this group include the Madagascar tree boa and the Amazon tree boa, which represent interesting alternatives for arboreal snakes that could be exhibited in foliage-rich terrariums. The pythons are our next obvious group. The famous Pythonidae family consists of some of the most recognizable species of snakes. Whereas boas are mostly found in the Americas, pythons are found in the Old World. The green tree python inhabits tropical rainforest in New Guinea and surrounding islands, with a small outcrop in the Australian Daintree rainforest. Arboreal and coloured a bright green shade with small white markings, it resembles an emerald tree boa, and both species are considered interchangeable despite being from different families. It may be perhaps even more popular as a captive species due to milder temperament. Ultimately a likely probability, but I don't imagine it to be included if the emerald tree boa is introduced. The Burmese python is often cited as one of the largest snakes in the world, usually second in weight and fourth in length. 
As a result, its body plan and behavior is reminiscent of anacondas, requiring permanent water sources living in the Bengal region, Indochina, and parts of Indonesia centered around the island of Java. Introductions into the Florida Everglades have turned it into an invasive species there. Besides their size, they don't offer much in terms of differentiation and as a result should only be a possibility, though their relatively docile nature renders widespread showcasing in zoos around the world. Perhaps the most famous python is the reticulated, considered the longest snake in the world, ahead of the green anaconda, and third in weight behind its close relative, the Burmese python, of which it shares most of its range. A great swimmer, the reticulated python has traversed the ocean and colonized islands outside its major continental ranges, where it inhabits many Southeast Asian islands up to New Guinea. The reticulated, net-like patterning of its skin is distinguishable and earns the python its common name, a fairly expected species due to its features and status as the longest snake in the world. African rock pythons are perhaps the most notable of this group stemming from the African continent, often pictured constricting and consuming whole animals on the savanna, such as antelopes, Nile crocodiles, and hyenas among other things. They are also notorious for several high-level cases of attacks on humans. To add variety to this continent, it is worth a shout as a possibility, but generally shouldn't be considered higher priority over other more notable pythons. The amethystine python is another consideration noted for its sheeny, alluring coloring that makes it popular as a pet and a showcased reptile. It is the largest wild snake in Australia and New Guinea, capable of consuming prey items such as large possums and wallabies. Otherwise, it does not bring much difference to the table and should only be noted as a possibility. Other notable inclusions can be the carpa python and the children's python, two notable Australian species popular with snake enthusiasts due to their mild temperament. Likewise, the ball python or royal python is another docile python from Africa, whilst the Indian rock python derives from the Indian subcontinent and perhaps a consideration to boost variety there. The colubrids are the largest family of snakes, with approximately 1,760 species. This group encompasses just over half of all known snake species. Despite this, there are only a few worth mentioning. The mangrove snake is a moderately venomous species of cat snakes, a genus known for their distinctive vertical pupils resembling cat eyes. The mangrove snake is one of the largest from this group, and as its name suggests, inhabits tropical rainforests and mangrove swamps around Southeast Asia's riverine habitats. Its glossy black and yellow banded appearance make it an exotically striking specimen that is popular in captivity. Its non-life-threatening venom also makes it relatively more appreciable than other more dangerous snakes, so it's a possibility. The boom slang is highly venomous, occurring over sub-Saharan Africa. Slender and highly agile, it is often exclusively arboreal, where it uses its potent toxicity to instantly kill its bird, small mammal and lizard prey. However, it is also capable of killing many animals larger than itself, in which it has resulted in many human deaths across its range. As one of the more venomous members of the colubrids, it deserves a shout as a possibility. Because of its attractive colors and patterns, its docile nature, ease of care and common occurrence, the corn snake is one of the most popular snakes kept in captivity, especially in the Americas. The different variations of the corn snake, such as coloring morphs, pattern morphs, compound morphs and scale mutations, render this species as having the most diverse variations in a single species, and different morphs are selectively bred and hybridized to develop different breeds on the pet market. Its subsequent prevalence in captivity should allow it to be a likely specimen for the terrarium. As one of North America's best known snakes, the common king snake is widely distributed, harmless, and its variations also offer many different morphs for reptile keepers, proving to be a similarly popular animal to the corn snake. In the desert, the king snake displays a rough yellow and black skin variation. In the western or Californian varieties, these make way for yellow and black bands, whilst Mexican king snakes are almost entirely black. Perhaps another possibility for the roster. The colubrid family is quite varied, and several notable subgroups in this family include the garter snakes, rat snakes, cat snakes, and vine or whip snakes. The elapids include the most venomous varieties of snakes, and thus this family are famous, feared, and highly prized for showcasing in zoos. Many of these snakes occur in Asia and on the Australian continent. 
Resembling a viper, deaf adders are actually elapids and fuss closer in relation to cobras and mambas. Highly venomous, the toxins of the northern deaf adder causes respiratory failure in humans within 4 hours, contributing to a staggering 50% death rate before effective antivenom was introduced. However, it is known to avoid human contact, often hides in secretive lairs, and is predominantly an ambush predator. Alternatively, we have the common deaf adder, prevalent over the shrublands and semi-arid regions of eastern and southwestern Australia. Its venom is slightly less toxic than northern varieties, but still extremely potent in its own right, causing death within 6 hours, and it can also deliver the fastest strike among all venomous snakes ever recorded in Australia. Both species are understandably interchangeable and possible inclusions for the game. The black mamba is Africa's longest venomous snake and also its deadliest, often approaching 3 meters in length. Inhabiting the savanna, open woodlands and dense forest of sub-Saharan Africa, the black mamba is quick and agile with no real natural predator. Its ability to strike long distances in quick succession renders targets immobilized within minutes and its aggressive nature in the wild makes it the most feared snake on the continent. Infamous, lucrative and highly sought after, the Black Mamba is one of the forefront expected snakes to be introduced into the game. The Indian or Spectacled Cobra is the archetype of the Cobra group, culturally revered on the subcontinent. Indian Cobras feature false-eyed spectacled shapes on their hood, a defining trait. They are often depicted with snake charmers, giving an indication they are tameable or react well in captivity. In fact, they are very dangerous and highly venomous snake in their own right, contributing to common snake bike related injuries in the region. However, it is for these reasons they are appreciated in zoos and would represent a likely species. The world's longest venomous snake, the King Cobra is also the most famous, recognizable with its chevron banded backside. Highly dangerous and fearsome, King Cobras prey chiefly on other snakes in dense forested areas. However, it is a mostly ground dwelling snake like other Cobras. Its dependency on this environment has also resulted in its evaluation as a vulnerable species due to habitat loss. The sheer notoriety of this species as the shiny example of all Cobras should warrant the King Cobra as an expected variety. Spitting Cobras are peculiar creatures, displaying the ability to launch its venom from its fangs, though this is usually a defense mechanism and not a hunting tactic. The venom is potent and if spat onto a victim's eyes could cause severe pain and even temporary or permanent blindness. The Indochinese species hails from a variety of habitats including rainforest, plains and wetlands. It is also attracted to human settlements due to abundance of rodent prey sources and thus is the frequent cause of snake attacks in its range. A possibility for an interesting inclusion but we most likely won't be able to see any spitting mechanics anyway even if it is included. The inland Taipan is famous for being by far the most venomous snake in the world. Unlike most snakes, its speciality as a mammalian predator makes its venom particularly effective against warm-blooded organisms. It is estimated that a single bite has enough venom to kill at least 100 adult males. Extremely fast and agile, it often strikes its victims multiple times in quick succession, delivering potent venom that usually kills within 30 to 45 minutes. Nevertheless, its remoteness means it rarely comes into contact with humans, enhancing the exotic nature of the species. It is showcased extensively, particularly in Australia, due to its perception of its deadly nature, although most reptile keepers consider it a placid snake to work with. An extremely likely addition from this group, perhaps only exceeded by the cobras due to better public familiarity with the latter. The most feared snake in Australia, however, is the Eastern Brown Snake. It is considered the second most venomous land snake and third most venomous overall in the world. However, its tendency to live on the outskirts of urban areas in forest and farmlands has resulted in it becoming the deadliest snake in Australia, responsible for 60% of all snake bite deaths. As a result, this species often strikes greater fear than the more venomous inland Taipan, translating into immense popularity as a captive animal. The snake is also noted for using a combination of its venom and constriction methods when hunting prey. Perhaps this species pertains enough notoriety to be considered an expected species. 
although its venom is not as potent as that of other Australian elapids such as the ones discussed before, the defining red belly and black body colouring has made this species an iconic venomous snake of the continent. Its range on the eastern seaboard of Australia, encompassing many major urban heartlands, has resulted in its status as one of Australia's most commonly encountered snakes. Its venom causes severe pain and significant illness, but no deaths have been recorded from this particular species. A common and decently popular sighting in zoos and reptile parks, it's a possibility but will no doubt be overshadowed by the other Australian elapids. Other notable varieties from the elapids include the coral snakes, which consist of some of North America's most venomous snakes. Green mambas also deserve special mention, highly aggressive and highly venomous snakes of Africa, though undoubtedly unlikely when compared to the black mamba. Other notable cobras of the Naja genus include the Caspian cobra, the world's most venomous cobra, as well as the forest, Philippine and Cape cobra. Aquatic varieties of this group including the sea crates and sea snakes will be discussed in a marine video at a later date. The viper family contains some of the most iconic snakes in the world and are infamous for possessing extremely long hinged fangs that allow deep penetration and injection of their sometimes lethal venom. Vipers are found everywhere in the world except Australia and Antarctica. The Jararaca is often considered the most dangerous snake in South America, a major cause of snake bite in its range, utilizing possibly fatal venom if untreated quickly. As a pit viper, it features the characteristically shaped head of the subfamily, as well as featuring heat sensory organs that allow the Jararaca to detect warm-blooded prey in its environment. It is not a generally popular or known snake outside South America, so it's only a possibility. The Bushmaster is a more famous viper variety stemming from this continent, known for its status as the largest viper in the world, and the longest venomous snake in the New World. Large sizes exceeding 3 meters are not unusual in this species, although they tend to be less stocky in design and weight compared to more robust and heavier vipers of the Old World. Bushmasters tend to have weak venom but produce and excrete a large amount. This species is badly affected by stress and rarely thrive in captivity. Another possible viper variety from South America. Puff adders are known for their stout and short builds, and named for their ability to increase their body size in a process called ballooning or puffing when agitated. They are so sluggish and heavy that they are forced to move in a straight line or rectilinear motion like large boas. Although its venom is not as potent as the black mamba, it is responsible for causing the most snake bite fatalities in Africa, owing to abundant and wide distribution, habitation close to human settlement, and its aggressive behavior. The puff adder is found over most of sub-Saharan Africa, avoiding the driest desert and wettest rainforest regions. An equally common and popular specimen in captivity should favor the puff adder as a very likely specimen. Featuring prominent nasal horns, the rhinoceros viper is perhaps one of the most identifiable viper varieties in the world. Like many vipers and adders in its family, it features a triangular arrow-headed shape with stocky build, preferring dense, humid rainforest in Central and West Africa. Feared in Africa, the rhinoceros viper is hypervenomous with just small doses inducing fatal consequences. They are generally considered placid, however, a remarkable difference from their other close relative, the puff adder, fuss are often well suited to the confines of captivity, a distinct creature that would pose as an expected addition. The Gaboon Viper is noted for having the largest fangs and highest venom yield of any snake. Geometric and cryptic leaf-like patterning assist in its camouflage on the forest floor, but its coup de gras is its 2 inch long fangs that penetrate and secrete venom deep into its victim's organ tissue. Most prey die just from the sheer trauma caused by its fangs alone, rather than its venom, although it does possess a quite potent strain like many vipers. Gaboon vipers also have a reputation as one of the more unaggressive species of vipers, rarely showing tendencies to strike or displaying alarming postures. As a result, they live in captivity quite well, even tolerate being handled, and this temperament proves attractive to many zoos that wish to showcase a large and highly venomous snake. Another likely addition from the viper family. 
Diamondback rattlesnakes are iconic vipers from North America, famous for their distinctive namesake patterning and the rattle on the end of their tail which they vibrate as a warning sound. The eastern variety inhabits southeastern United States and is the largest rattlesnake as well as the heaviest venomous snake in the New World, though not the longest as that mantle goes to the South American Bushmaster. The western species is responsible for the majority of snake related fatalities in the United States and Mexico, where it usually inhabits dry, open and rocky terrain such as deserts, scrublands and grasslands. Rattlesnakes are extremely prevalent in captivity, where they have become an expectation to be showcased in zoos. The two interchangeable diamondback species are considered archetypal of the group. Another notable rattlesnake is the Sidewinder, found in desert regions of southwestern North America. As its name suggests, sidewinding is the method of locomotion preferred by these snakes, which is unusual compared to other viper species. This is thought to be an adaptation for rapid movement and traction over soft desert sand. Raised protrusions above their eyelids assist in preventing sand drifting over their eyes as they lie buried in the sand, which is why sidewinders are often referred to as horned rattlesnakes. Sidewinders are a possible addition, their distinctive method of locomotion will be difficult to showcase in the game's current terrarium mechanics though. Russell's Viper is a venomous snake species responsible for causing the most snake bite incidents anywhere in the world. Due to a variety of factors including widespread distribution, occurrence in high population areas and its aggressive demeanour. It is found most abundant in India and Sri Lanka where it is considered part of the big four deadliest snakes in the region. It appears more sporadically across the rest of Asia. Besides its track record of human interaction, it's arguably a less interesting viper than many other mentions, so it's only a possibility. In a similar vein, the fur de lance, or locally known as the Turkey Opello, is considered the most dangerous snake in Central and South America due to its aggressiveness and habitation near human settlement. It is also one of the only viper species that inhabit Caribbean islands such as Trinidad, St. Lucia and Martinique. Another possibility that would probably be lower priority than most of the other vipers. Some other notable examples from this group include the Cottonmouth and the Copperhead. Cross adders and other pit vipers can also be considered. In our miscellaneous section we'll cover snakes that don't fall into our 5 listed major families. Considered a primitive snake, the sunbeam snake is unmistakable for its alluring, iridescent and glossy scales. This snake with its abundance, distribution range and rapid reproduction cycles form the backbone prey item of many other snakes and animals. Non-venomous and docile, they also make suitable pets, especially for beginner snake keepers. In zoos they offer a reasonably attractive specimen but less remarkable than other iconic snakes, a possibility. As one of the strangest looking snakes, the Madagascar leaf nose snake deserves a mention. This snake is thin and arboreal, usually camouflaged effectively to its surroundings, drawing comparisons to the vine snakes in the Colubridae family. Males sport a long projection on their snout, whilst the female protrusion resembles a fur cone. It is believed these adaptations assist further with camouflage as it resembles plant leaves, twigs and cones in the snake's environment. This snake is also venomous, bites cause severe pain but it is not lethal. Its peculiar camouflaging appearance will no doubt improve its rather obscure popularity, so it may be good enough to push for a likely spot. Another group we have not covered that could be worth a notable mention is the blind snakes. These snakes have reduced ability to see, hence their name, but their behavior in burrowing underground or within logs makes their consideration as a spectator attraction in a zoo rather difficult. That ends our predictions and wishlist video for snakes in our reptilian terrarium part of this series. Vote for your next reptile group to be showcased and analyzed. As always, if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Catch you guys later.